Hey, hope you're doing well. Andy here from Drive Steady, and today I'm reviewing this, the brand new Mercedes AMG SL63, the latest iteration of this iconic Mercedes. So since I've already done an in-depth review of the SL55, in this video I'm going to be comparing the 55 and 63 trim levels, highlighting some of their similarities, differences amongst the engine, pricing, interior details, other functionality, and of course, the driving dynamics. And in doing so, I hope to answer the question, which SL should I buy, the 55 or the 63? So let's get started with this review of the Mercedes AMG SL63. Okay, so let's start the review off by thanking Keys Mercedes for giving me access to this SL63 today. If you happen to be interested in an SL63 or a 55, they have plenty of them in stock. I've left their information in the description below. Make sure you give them a call. Now, let's go ahead and start it off by looking at the pricing differences between the 55 and 63 trim levels. So the SL55 starts at $137,400 and the 63 at $178,100 for a difference of $40,700 before options and destination charges and handling and whatnot. But both have touring and performance packages to choose from that tailor more for either a daily driver spec in the touring or something a little sportier in the performance package. Now, as a reminder, and I covered this during the SL55 video, no more regular SL models. So no SL450 or SL550, just AMG models, so SL55, SL63. But putting that aside, now let's jump into the details about what the additional $40,000 nets you in the 63. All right, so now let's talk about the engine details. And one fair warning, of course, you're jumping from an SL55 to a 63 means a jump in performance. So a lot of the price difference between the two trim levels are going to be related to the performance gains, which I'm gonna cover here, starting off with the engine. So this is the four liter twin turbocharged V8, making 577 horsepower and 590 pounds-feet of torque with a 7,000 RPM redline. It's mated to a nine-speed double clutch transmission and it's putting power down to all four wheels via the Mercedes 4Matic Plus Sport all-wheel drive system. Now this four liter is the same engine that you get in the SL55, but in the 63 it gets a little hotter tune with some more boost pressure, resulting in 108 horsepower and 74 pounds-feet of torque gain compared to the SL55. And that results in a faster zero to 60 time, 3.5 seconds here in the SL63, while in the 55 it's 3.8 eight seconds. In addition to that, you get some other mechanical updates. So in the SL63, you get an electronic locking rear differential, while in the 55, it's a mechanical item, and you get dynamic engine mounts. And what this does, it'll basically translate directly into a softer or firmer ride while you're driving fast or when you're driving slow. But let's put that aside for a second and take a listen to what this four liter sounds like before we move to the rest of the differences.
So there you had a chance to get a dose of the exhaust. This thing sounds really, really nice, especially in those higher modes with the exhaust pops. Now let's talk about some of the other mechanical changes related to performance, starting off with the suspension. So the SL55 has AMG ride control, but the 63 has AMG active ride control. And what this means mechanically is that the mechanical roll bars are replaced by hydraulic components in the 63. And basically the application or the differences that you'll feel with this suspension compared to the 55 is that it has better roll prevention, keeping the car flatter. But not only that, according to Mercedes, it also rides better than the SL55 because of the trickery that's happening with all of these hydraulic components components compared to the mechanical ones found in the SL55. Now the 63 also sits 10 millimeters lower than the 55. So this suspension is actually very, very sophisticated because they're really trying to balance the extra sportiness in the 63, but still making it comfortable enough to drive on a daily basis. We'll see how this all translates during the driving portion of the review, but one really quick item as far as the similarities go. These wheels are the same ones that you can get on the 55. They're 20 inches on all four corners. The brakes are the same whether you go 55 or 63 and so are the tires. So since we talked about the suspension and the engine, let's switch gears and talk some aesthetics as we look at the exterior differences. All right, so now let's look at the exterior but before doing that, I just want to say that this new generation of the SL is absolutely gorgeous. Whether it's in the 55 or the 63 trim level, it's stunning. And specifically this example, I want to highlight the color. It's called Alpine Gray. It's a manufacturer color and it costs $1,700 to get it painted in this color. But if you ask me, it is worth every single any of it. Now let's talk about the differences or basically the lack thereof because the SL55 and the 63 practically look identical. But let's start off with some of the similarities. So the body and the styling are the same. The paint color options are the same. The standard 20 inch wheels that you get are also the same. But there is an additional option available on the 63 trim level. These are the 21 inch forged AMG wheels. But that's not really a big deal because you can still get 21 inch wheels just in a different design on the SL55. Now, some of the differences. You get red calipers in the 55 and yellow calipers in the 63. Now, this is as standard. If you really wanted yellow calipers in your 55, you could, but it would just cost you a little bit more money. Now, two things that are available on the 63, which you cannot get on the 55, are the AMG Aerodynamics Kit and the additional carbon fiber exterior bits. All right, so now the differences on the interior of the SL63. So starting off with Mercedes-Benz augmented video navigation. So with the SL55, you do get Mercedes-Benz navigation as standard, but in the 63, you get this augmented video aspect of it. And basically while you're using the navigation system, guiding yourself somewhere, it'll turn on the video and it will put on some overlays and some icons to help you navigate yourself to basically where you're going to. It's actually very, very cool and works in conjunction with another standard feature, the heads up display. So it'll display these augmented reality, not reality, but augmented video icons in the heads up display, helping guide you to where you're going. So that's the second item that heads up display in addition to the augmented video uh, navigation system. In addition to that, you also get an additional driving mode. So the SL55 and 63 share the slippery, comfort, sport, and sport plus and individual modes, but the 63 has an additional mode called race. And this race mode is basically achieved through the navigation system, or you can use the drive mode selector. And it's a specific tune related to the engine characteristics. Uh, we'll see if it really makes that much of a difference during the driving portion of the review. And finally, the last standard item that's included in the 63 is the AMG track pace application and the, and the hardware that comes with it. It's basically a recording system that allows you to record your surroundings 
surroundings as you're driving around on the street or if you are taking your SL63 onto a racetrack. This thing is actually very clever and sophisticated. It has the ability to record 80 different data elements such as speed, how much horsepower and torque you're using, your steering angle, acceleration, all of these things directly from inside the car and you have the ability to view all of these things within the AMG TrackPace app of the infotainment system. So those are basically the interior differences of the SL63 trim level. But now let's get to the driving portion of the review and see what all that extra power and sophisticated suspension translates to. All right, so now the driving portion of the SL63 review. And as always, this is what the key looks like. It's the same key that you would get in the SL 55 it's got a little amg logo here behind this sticker so it's actually one of the better modern keys considering how unsatisfactory certain expensive car keys are now as far as visibility it's fantastic great out the front you do get that big power bulge hood out in front of you out the back there's nothing to impede out the sides this has a fantastic 360 degree camera system uh, all of the angles are covered so no issues as far as visibility goes uh, the base price of this car as i mentioned was 170 some uh, odd and change uh, this car uh, as i'm driving it is a hundred and ninety nine thousand dollars so there are a lot of options on this car it's quite expensive so let's go ahead and turn this thing on and go for a quick drive the exhaust starts up really nice tone to it all right so let's get going put it in drive and I've got the top down it's an absolutely glorious day in SoCal earlier it was quite overcast and cloudy which was fantastic for filming but now it's beautiful the sun is out it's about almost 80 degrees anyways let's get going now so what I'm gonna do is immediately I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the go fast mode which in this car remember is race so let's see what this got and the baffles open up in the exhaust and it starts holding the transmission gear uh, a lot longer for you let traffic clear up just a little bit let me get some more space and let's go wow okay very oh wow the exhaust pops really really nice Wow, yeah, this is, oh, wow, very, very fast. Impressive. A lot of down low torque. Once you press on the accelerator, that was in third gear and I felt the car really, really get up and go. So let's create some more space for ourselves. Wow, this is monstrously fast. Monstrously fast. <laughs> Wow, and then that, I can't get enough of the AMG Performance exhaust note. It's really nice. It almost sounds a little bit more aggressive than what I heard in the SL. Now, let's test this race mode that you get in this car. So, all right, so let's do, oh, the road's closed here. Okay, let's change the plans. All right, so race mode, let's put it in second. Okay. Okay, race mode properly fast. Now let's put it back in Sport Plus and let's see what, if it makes a bit that any much of a difference. Second gear. It's still stupidly fast with the Sport Plus mode. Uh, it would be really hard to convince me that there's a massive difference between Sport Plus and race mode because it doesn't feel like there is. Now, one thing uh, about the power delivery, so this is definitely faster than the SL55, but I think that's to be expected considering that it has 100 more horsepower and 75 pounds-feet of torque in addition to the SL. So that's to be expected. Now, one of the things uh, about the suspension that is a little different than the SL is in comfort mode. The SL55 is in comfort mode. 
I feel like this more sophisticated suspension with the hydraulics uh, versus the mechanical anti-roll bars rides a little better, a little bit more comfortable, more compliant in comfort mode than the SL55 in comfort mode. And I think that's one of the selling points uh, that Mercedes is trying to bake into this really sophisticated suspension and it really is and it's not only made for performance driving to keep the car flat and whatnot uh, when I read up on it it's actually supposed to be more comfortable while you're driving over bumps more compliant when you're driving straight so it makes sense and I can certainly feel a difference in comfort mode with this but in some of the other modes in Sport and Sport Plus it stiffens up the same way that the SL55 does and it does a nice job. Now as far as the transmission goes the transmission is fantastic the 9 speed double clutch even uh, in automatic or in manual shift mode works wonderfully uh, it's not as good as a PDK but it's almost there it's almost there it's not as crisp I feel like the PDK is just unmatched, especially this newest version of it. But nothing taken away from this one. In automatic mode, as I'm driving around here, it is really, really nice. Now, the brake pedal, um, it's not as sporty as I want it to be. And I saw the same thing in the SL55. Uh, granted, Mercedes needs to tailor this as a grand touring car as well. And I think that's what I'm feeling here because for example when I drive a 911 that pedal is really firm right at the top and it gives me a lot of sensitivity right a, a lot of bite right at the top of the pedal so this is more towards a grand touring uh, and a little bit of a blending in of a sport pedal now as far as the rest of the suspension and the steering it is properly sharp it it doesn't feel like a true sports car uh, especially in this comfort mode when you put it in the sport and the sport plus it does properly tighten up and give you that feel but still not the same as a 911 in my hum humble opinion so the big selling points or the big price difference of this car the power and the suspension so the power I don't know is it really worth the 40,000 the suspension that extra comfort in comfort mode is it really worth it I'm gonna have to say no uh, I feel like the SL55 is already really really fast and uh, it's also comfortable in comfort mode uh, and granted there is a difference here in comfort mode but I don't feel like the $40,000 difference in price is really warranted for jumping into an SL. Uh, and also to add on to that argument, some of the things that are standard in this SL can be optioned into the SL55. For example, you can get the yellow brake calipers, you can get the augmented video navigation and some of the other things in the SL. So. If you wanted those things, you can save a whole lot of money and the 55, like I said, is not slow and it's plenty compliant enough and it's plenty sporty enough compared to this car. Uh, this car is for somebody who wants the best, wants the big 63 badge on the back, wants that extra power. Of course, you can't take it away from this car that it has 100 extra horsepower and it's just naturally going to feel faster and that little bit of comfort in a little bit extra comfort in the comfort mode so take your pick if you have the money to spend sure go for the 63 if you don't and you want 75 80 85 probably 80 to 85 percent of that uh, experience SL55 it is but let me be clear if you are somebody who's just looking for an SL63 and you're cross shopping it with another car, you're not even looking at the SL55. This is a fantastic car. The SL platform, whether you're going 55 or 63 independently, those cars are amazing or these cars are amazing. Uh, they're massively better than the prior generation. They've got extreme amounts of power, uh, good amounts of sportiness, better than what you had in the prior generation. And you've got killer, killer 
looks in this new gen SL and obviously better technology as well. So that's pretty much it. If you have any other questions, please make sure you leave me a comment down below or send me a message on Instagram. I highly, highly encourage you to watch my full in-depth review of the SL55. Uh, a lot of the general functionality and usability of that car applies to this car. So if you're interested in the nitty gritty, watch that video. There's a lot of detail in that that I did not cover in this video. So uh, thank you for watching this video. Until next time, drive steady.